So welcome to the kickoff. Uh, this is going to be a great, uh, awesome release, the best release ever. And the reason it's the best release ever is because it's our 10-0 release. So, um, and we have 10 fingers, um, so that's a big deal. And so the, as, as usual, the release uh, post draft is already up online uh, as a WIP. Uh, so please visit it and see all the great features we already have uh, there in the release post. Um, and of course, that's going to be finalized once we uh, ship uh, 10.0. Uh, on the discussion side, we're going to keep working on performance as with uh, many other teams. It's very important for us. Um, and so you can click on that link there uh, to see many of the issues that we are working on or planning to work on in 10.0. Another big area that we want to drive forward on the discussion side is increasing usage for some of our, um, you know, uh, flagship features um, and that are very important uh, to the platform going forward. In particular, service desk and issue boards are two areas that we want to focus on and get more users using it. Um, a lot of, uh, it turns out a lot of our users don't even know uh, about issue boards, um, and uh, even though it's been around for close to a year. And service desk, of course, is a lot newer, but again, we want to increase usage. So um, those two issues are links there. You will see we have some great designs to um, push people or just to educate them, let them know uh, what are issue boards and in particular service tests, it's a little bit harder to uh, tell people what it is um, in the first place and then to get them to ask their users to use. So there's two layers of uh, communication there and education. And we wanted to just start with the very first layer to get our existing users to understand what service desk is. Uh, we want to make a big splash in the JIRA side. We understand many of our customers are coming to GitLab uh, and, and they want to use a GitLab merge request, but they're still hanging on to uh, Elastin and JIRA. So we want to make that transition very easy for them. So uh, if you've ever used JIRA before, you know there's something called a development panel, which you can see um, pull requests or merge requests. You can see commits and branches right inside uh, a JIRA issue or a JIRA ticket, and you can click on it and then you go to the associated branch, commit, merge request, so on and so forth. So we're going to start doing that inside JIRA uh, in the upcoming release, again, to make that transition seamless. Um, we want to start commenting on images inside merge request diffs. I know that's being mentioned other places uh, in this kickoff as well. But just really quickly, we want to uh, take our code review um, and move beyond just you know text review. So everyone can contribute. Um, and it's not just code. It's, it's images. It's assets. Um, we want to keep moving forward with moderation. Uh, we ha now have the ability to report abuse in uh, issue descriptions and, and comments. Uh, and our next feature is locking down issues. So um, if you start having a flame war or, or, or you know, people are being abusive in a particular issue comment thread, we want to lock that down very easily. Um, group issue boards is huge. It's going to be the biggest thing since project issue boards, uh, again, which I mentioned was released just about a year ago. And uh, I think I mentioned this on many kickoffs already. A lot of our users or customers are asking for group features. They, they want to move beyond projects or, or projects is not good enough for them. They want team-based workflows. Um, and in the GitLab world, that means uh, leveraging groups. So group issue boards is, a, is going to be a huge feature. Um, many of our customers and users have been asking for it. And finally, Slack is something that um, we've been working on. Uh, we have uh, users able to go from GitLab.com to Slack with one click as of 9.4. And with 10.0, we want to do the reverse flow. We're talking to the Slack folks as well, and they're very supportive, and they're going to help us um, in, in terms of marketing efforts and, and in terms of telling us uh, what their users want. So um, uh, we're going to run forward with Slack. And the first step here is just to complete that flow. Um, so if a user starts inside Slack, um, they can find the GitLab app in the Slack directory, click a button, and then go directly to gitlab.com to um, go to our landing page and add the uh, feature there. Uh, Fabio, you're up. Uh, Fabio, you might be on mute. He's on vacation. Oh, OK. <laughs> Yeah, he actually joined the call, but he's indeed in vacation, and he said if like his internet broke up or something, I had to take over. So I waited a bit. Uh, anyway, um, I'll try to do it as uh, enthusiastic as he does it. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, I'm, I'm likely gonna fail, but I'm gonna try anyway. Uh, so we're beginning with uh, Autodevs, one of the Auto DevOps. I'm sorry, talking too fast already. 
Uh, it's a direction issue. Uh, it's a huge issue. Uh, Sid wrote up a whole bunch of points which we want to address, but basically it comes down to uh, you basically want to write code and everything else. Uh, GitLab, as far as we can, we should take uh, care of it. Uh, we're going to push this forward. Uh, next uh, thing is we're going to show you HTML in the, in the browser because browsers run the HTML. Who knew? Um, then security. Uh, so, uh, protected runners, um, let's say you have shared runners, there are ways that you could leak um, confidential information, for example, variables. Uh, we try to hide them as much as we can, but uh, we can't guarantee that we actually hide them because, for example, you could email them to people. Um, now, what you can do with protected runners is tell uh, the runner that he can only pick up jobs from protected branches. So we're linking these now, which gives you a way to secure everything, uh, at least like the variables and the whole environment where you execute your, uh, your test code deploy. The second one is uh, runners. You can lock them to uh, projects, uh, and this will be the default. Now, um, the next point, performance, like uh, Victor said, uh, we will also, as a team, focus on this. Um, yeah, Yorick came up with, no, not came up, but his measurements uh, show two slow controller actions. Uh, one is job show and the other, I don't know by heart, but uh, two will pick out this release. Um, so now I'm in the dark for one of them. Use configured endpoints in runners. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't read up on this one, uh, but I'll invite you to click on it. And uh, per project's pipeline numbers, that's basically, for everyone who develops in GitLab, IIDs for pipelines. Uh, because now, for example, in the merge request widget, you'll see an ID of your pipeline, which is this crazy long number. And it has no meaning for you or for someone else because it's the ID. So if I create one in my project and someone else I don't know creates another pipeline in his project, that increases my counter for the ID as well. So we will have IDs scoped to a project. This is gonna be huge migration, so uh, this is gonna be interesting. And then there are two uh, bug fixes as well. So basically, if dependency is not met for a job, then it will just fail, uh, seems reasonable. And for subgroups, you can't have GitLab pages because of the way we store pages in the pages daemon, uh, but we do show URLs for subgroups. So uh, we're gonna hide that. And then over to Josh. Thanks, CJ. Uh, so uh, I am super excited about uh, 10.0 in particular on the Prometheus items here. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting features to come up and kind of round out some of the work that we've been doing here the last couple releases. Uh, the first one is that we're going to go ahead and uh, enhance our support uh, for charts and multiple time series. And so right now you can get some really awesome charts around response times and re request throughput. Um, but we can't quite display, for example, the request throughput broken down by response code. Um, and so in 9.5, we're able to do that, which is really exciting. And we'll also be able to get some colors on there for the individual series as well. Um, so we can get some uh, sort of distinction between perhaps 500 codes and 200 codes, red versus green. You know, it has some kind of instant cognitive recognition of which one's good, which one's bad uh, for charts that make sense. Uh, next up, kind of building on top of that as well, we're going to be adding comparison of Canary versus stable. Uh, so if you're doing Canary style deployments where you have sort of version dot next deployed in a controlled way in production, say 5%, 10% of your fleet, um, we'll be able to actually gather metrics from that and compare it automatically against your kind of current version or GA version as well. And that way we can tell you, you know, is your response time going up? Is it going down? Um, how is your request throughput going? How's your error rates and things like that? So some really key metrics there on the response metrics will give you nice clean comparisons between Canary and production and give you a good idea of if you should go on and continue to uh, let that Canary roll all the way out through all of your production nodes and become the new GA version. The other big item we got here on the Prometheus side is to uh, attain parity as far as metrics goes 
with the existing InfluxDB based system. Uh, so uh, we've been kind of working on this for a while, laying the foundation, building uh, kind of some way, a way to uh, instrument Ruby code with, uh, with Prometheus metrics. Um, and this is going to be sort of uh, uh, the big step here where we, because uh, of hit parity with we have a fourth InfluxDB, plus we have some extra stuff as well. Uh, and that'll then allow us to deprecate InfluxDB here as part of the 10.0 release. Um, and that'll be really exciting uh, to hit that metric there in that bar. And we'll, of course, continue to push ahead and instrument additional areas, um, but at least we'll have parity again with uh, what we had before on the InfluxDB side. So that's uh, the exciting features we have coming on the Prometheus side in 10.0. Super exciting. And we can now transition on to the build side where we're going to go ahead and have our first standalone chart for sort of our, our new version of Helm charts. Uh, that'll be available for the container registry. Uh, we're actually already running sort of the standalone version in production on GitLab.com today. And we'll be bringing uh, that uh, to uh, our sort of um, cloud native repository of our new standalone charts. Um, that is not based on Omnibus, um, so because of that kind of new cloud native deployment model, which we're uh, driving towards here uh, on, on the build side. So uh, very exciting there. Um, we'll also be making some improvements to uh, the GitLab sort of HA and service HA. Uh, so with this, we'll go ahead and uh, make it easier to deploy the application nodes in, in HA fashion um, and improving uh, some of how that works and the configuration required to, to get that done. Um, and then uh, in keeping with the theme of 10.0 and a big major release, we'll also be working towards removing support for Postgres 9.2. Um, we've had it for a while. We've been actually sort of migrating everyone as they have upgraded to the 9.x series of releases. Um, and 9.2 in this case is actually uh, going end of life on the Postgres side uh, in September, which of course when this release will be shipping. Um, and so uh, to coincide with that, as also along with the 10.0 release, we'll go ahead and remove support for it. And this will make room for um, uh, the 10.0 support, which we're excited about as well on the Postgres side um, in the near future here. Um, last on the build side, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some work to simplify and improve the OnUS package installation. Uh, so our goal is to have a single command that you can run to go ahead and download the package install a package, and then also pass the required main bits of information, mainly the DNS name, directly into GitLab, and so we can reconfigure it all in one shot, uh, as opposed to having you uh, execute separate commands, edit a file to pass the right DNS name, and then reconfigure yourself. And so, uh, again, really excited about this, make things easier to install uh, GitLab, and as well as lay the foundation for some other exciting features we have coming up around things like supports for Let's Encrypt on the SSL side. Um, so again, can't be more excited about 10.0, uh, best release ever. Uh, and uh, on to you, Mike, to talk about how exciting the platform priorities are uh, in our 10.0 release. Josh, thank you very much. Uh, firstly, apologies to everyone. I'm having to join via mobile phone from the middle of the Alps because a lightning storm has basically taken my internet down to 1996 internet speeds, and um, it's not basically viable to join via the internet. Anyway, let me move on very quickly with what we're doing in platform. Um, I guess once upon a time, there was a release called 9.6, and uh, release 9.6 had a younger brother called release 9.4. And in 9.4, we started introducing via a feature flag our new navigation to GitLab. And in 9.4 and 9.5, We've been improving that and listening to a lot of feedback, and the entire UX team have basically been heads down in research and design and really trying to come up with a better way to navigate and understand where you are in GitLab. And in 10.0, um, the new navigation will be the default and the only navigation released to everyone. And from everything that we've seen so far, it's starting to do an amazing job at helping people navigate and understand um, GitLab's hierarchy a lot better. And we're really, really excited for this. And this was one of the primary reasons that uh, 9.6 got renamed to 10.0 was because GitLab will look very different um, in 10.0. And there's some great other features coming out in addition to what people have seen today, um, in particular in 9.5 as well, a lot of improvements, but in 10.0, We'll really be putting the finishing touches on the navigation and um, uh, we'll be bringing back 
the ability to customize your theme of GitLab. So if you don't like purple, like we all love purple at GitLab, you'll be able to change the appearance of the, the sort of top header and some of the tinting on the left navigation to some other colors. So this is really exciting. Um, it's been a, an amazing effort from just multiple teams and multiple people uh, and can't wait to ship it. Next is we're in the, in the platform team, we're really putting, uh, doubling down on our efforts of, on performance. Um, in every release, we're in, in introducing performance improvements, but in 10.0, um, the platform team are going to be tackling probably two to three times the number of performance um, improvements. So this is making pages faster, making projects create quicker, making commits happen faster, um, and then related to performance and the one feature that will be coming out as effectively a performance and availability management feature is going to be an EE feature which will allow people to store LFS files in object storage making sort of large installations and large uh, LFS implementations of GitLab easier to manage um, through uh, effectively connecting it to object storage. Um, so this is just building on some of the great work that the uh, CI team CI slash CD team, sorry, have been doing on uh, artifact storage in uh, object storage. Uh, as everyone probably knows, we introduced subgroups in 9.0, and we've been continuing to improve those. One of the big blockers for people adopting subgroups is subgroups allows you to manage GitLab in uh, a better way by structuring your projects better but a lot of people have locked down the ability to create top level groups. And this also means that they can't create subgroups either and sort of delegating that ability to other people in the group to allow them to create subgroups and create some structure. So the administrators are not having to do this all of the time is a sort of welcome addition to subgroups. So this will, you know, really be a big improvement for how people use subgroups, allowing other people to create them. And then sort of somewhat related to that, um, just inheriting some of the share locking capabilities. I'm taking up probably too much time here, but we are improving um, some LDAP group sync capabilities, which is uh, EE, uh, GitLab Enterprise Edition uh, functionality, just allowing uh, better synchronization at login and via the API. And um, additionally, with the internationalization effort we've been doing, we are adopting a platform called Crowdin, and Crowdin will basically be the source of truth and where we accept translation uh, merge request coming from the community. They have some amazing tools to allow people to contribute, to suggest, to vote on, on uh, internationalization and translation strings. So we're really excited to be working with them. Um, and then finally, the little surprise is we're going to start to work on a GraphQL API. Um, and this will be done in, in, in an experimental way with the merge request widget. Um, and this is really exciting, but it's probably a slightly more long-term investment because it'll take us quite a while to uh, get to a full GraphQL API, um, but we're really looking forward to getting stuck into that technology. So that's far too much of me, and over to Jacob to tell us what's going on in front-end DC land. Thanks so much. That was a great update. Um, so on the front-end, DC land, we are doing a lot of things that Victor already talked about. Um, we're trying to improve the discussion capabilities on from the front end side. Uh, one major thing we're going in the direction of is helping uh, people with their visual assets. So we're going to start by commenting on images uh, and commenting on a specific coordinate on an image so that um, you know, we can start to have comments on images and specific comments on a specific point on an image, which is really exciting. Uh, we have the ability to lock issues and the ability to move issues uh, to a different project using the sidebar. So we're starting to add a lot more stuff uh, into the sidebar, which is very exciting. And um, finally, we are doing a couple of proof of concepts. And one of the things we're going to push forward to get into 10.0 is the repo editor, um, which is technically platform, um, but we're gonna finish it anyway. So we're crossing uh, the boundaries of front end. Uh, Tim is not here, so Kushal will uh, read for Tim. Uh, thanks, Jacob. Uh, so on the front end AC side, uh, we have uh, different performance uh, improvements uh, around the platform and the Prometheus side. 
as for the performance improvements for the platform uh, we already had uh, lazy loading for issues and uh, merge requests in in the 9.5 so we'll improve around that we also got inline javascript removed so uh, we will improve on how the page load can be improved by uh, removing any additional javascript that is blocking the first view then one of the big uh, plans that we have is to upgrade the jquery because right now we are using jquery 2.xdbs and uh, it is a bit heavier compared to jquery 3 so we'll we'll have uh, that upgraded as well and then we'll unify the way ajax uh, requests are handled so right now we are using a couple of technologies so we'll probably unify those into a single api that can be used to perform ajax requests so that could help as well in uh, improving uh, performance uh, yeah so that is it from the front end ac uh, on to the ux sara awesome thanks so uh, the navigation we're still working on some of the finishing touches uh, we've got a lot of great feedback from the community thank you to everyone that chimed in and let us know what they liked and didn't like um, so there's a lot of calls to make the color customizable so there's an issue that we put forward to that i think we'll start with three or four different color schemes um, but feel free to jump in and suggest uh, what you'd like to see we're making improvements to the collapse sidebar um, and adding drop down links to the global links in the header to make it easier uh, to get uh, in and about. Uh, continued improvements to the breadcrumbs. We've had a lot of feedback on the breadcrumbs. Uh, so we're, we're, um, we have a large issue dedicated to looking at how to make those uh, less dense and easier to quickly see and navigate. Uh, moving on to improving perceived performance. So we're introducing skeleton loading in different areas. We're starting with issue boards um, and that will uh, help with just loading time and, and uh, kind of how, how you perceive the page being loaded. And making projects and features visibility settings less confusing. This is a huge one. Uh, take a look. I think that uh, a lot of you will really enjoy the differences that have been made here. A um, lot easier to just quickly understand what settings you're, you're actually using. Um, and then making search boxes consistent throughout GitLab. Uh, we're going through and making everything more consistent from drop downs to our hover states. And right now we're working on search boxes, making sure that those uh, deliver a consistent experience uh, all through GitLab. So that's just some of the stuff we're working on. Uh, Stan, what are you working on with Geo? Great, thanks. 10.0 will be awesome. We are doing a lot for Geo to make it production ready. And so that's just really a theme for 10.0, if you don't take anything away from this. Uh, one of which, uh, the first item is to start testing Git, uh, Geo with gitlab.com or some small example of uh, with a database that big with some small repos and things like that. Uh, we've been talking a lot about deprecating system hooks and we've done that, but we need to remove them. So 10.0 is a good time to just nuke them completely. There's a bunch of items that we need to do before we can do that. Um, and then we got to start measuring how quickly are we downloading things? How long does it take to actually schedule something? So that's part of, you know, production readiness and getting, getting the data we need to understand how it's behaving. Um, there's a, there's a feature that's in work right now to, uh, we have a legacy way of storing projects on disk and we're moving to this hash base format so that, uh, every project sort of retains a permanent uh, directory on disk so you never have to rename things. And so we're gonna need to figure out how do we actually migrate to this new format. So whether we need to have an API, how do we do this in bulk? How do we monitor for all those migrations? And so that will go into a lot for 10.0. And then finally, one of the things in NoCare is just having a better testing tool so that we can exercise Geo in a way that our, our users may be using it and catch a lot of problems before they actually become issues. So that's really Geo in a nutshell. Uh, thanks everybody for a great kickoff. I think 10.0 is gonna be really, really awesome. I'm really excited to see all this new, all the new navigation on by default and all the great features coming down the line. So uh, anything else anybody wants to add? Best release ever indeed. Great, thanks everyone.